All right, we've got a 1.2 litre Fiat 500 for a cam belt, water pump and drive belt replacement. Uh, these are the parts we're using. We've got a Fiat cam belt, Fiat water pump, Fiat tensioner, uh, auxiliary belt and a new gasket for the 1.2 kit that we're using and all uh, instructions and tensions from Autodata. Okay, so when we're doing a cam belt on these cars, we need access to two parts of the engine. We need access from the side and access from the top. So we've taken off the offside front wheel, giving us access to the crank pulley here, which we're gonna remove, and then we'll move on to the top. Okay, what I have in my hand here is not the cam belt itself, but the auxiliary timing belt that goes along with it. Usually they're fitted at the same time. Um, this here is the outside of the belt. Uh, it's what you see from on top or from the side generally, unless you look on one of the pulleys. Uh, and this is what they look like when they've been around for too long. So this is why we replaced them. This can snap uh, and cause quite a lot of hassle. Okay, so we've gone from the side. Now it's time to clear up the top of the car. So we're gonna remove this, this, uh, a lot of other stuff around here, the engine mounts, etc., side covers. So we have access to the cam belt itself and the water pump. Okay, quite interesting. Not something to do with the cam belt job itself, but something we would end up finding while doing it anyway. This is a breather pipe that goes into the back of the air box, which sits on top, this thing here, uh, just here. There's a nipple, that small nipple there. Uh, that's pretty bunged up, kind of gross. Uh, we're gonna have to give uh, everything a little bit of a clean. Uh, but that breather pipe needs to be replaced. Firstly, that's actually not the right pipe, but even though it's a replacement, it's all cracked and uh, kind of gross. And this here is the throttle body, which again, we're gonna have to give a bit of a clean before we whack it all back together. Uh, so just a little bit of information, things we find while doing the job. Okay, so as I said, we need to take off the side cam covers. Uh, to do that, we do have to take out the engine mount, which would have sat here. Um, so we do want to put a jack onto the sump. We put a bit of rubber on there to protect it. You don't want metal on metal. Uh, and just to show you what it looks like laid out from top to bottom, left to right. Top one, you would uh, undo this one first, then that one, and then just the final one that sits uh, at the bottom next to the pulley. And along on the sides, there is a channel that allows cabling to go through. So you do want to pull those out before you don't want to damage the electrics. Okay, so we've taken off everything on the side, we've taken off everything on top, and we've removed the cam cover, which is held in by these eight mil bolts here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the side here, the bottom pulley. Uh, we're going to spin the cam around and we're going to try and time it up. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so a good little point I can make here is, so we've locked off the cam at the bottom, we want to slot it at this end. This is a key, it's got a specific shaping in there. So this should, if it's all timed up rightly, slot in. Not going in at all. What that means is that this needs to go around 108 degrees, which we're going to give it one more spin. Hopefully that'll go in nicely on the next turn. We will to lock everything off and remove the cam belt. All right, so we just give it another spin at the bottom. So now we'll see if the key slides in nicely and yeah, perfect. So the car isn't out of time. Uh, belt is just up for replacement because it's old. I thought I'd just show again with this one, just as I did with the auxiliary timing belt. It's a bit harder to see on this, but there is perish happening. Um, like I said, this isn't really a out of time car. It's not that the belt is stretched too much. Um, it's just up for renewal. It's past its lifetime. So yeah, belt's old, will naturally perish. Right, so as I showed, we've removed the cam belt. Uh, the other thing we've done is removed the tensioner. Uh, if you do decide to do this yourself for some reason, hold on to this, you usually don't get another one. Uh, what this looks like in the car is this. So the next step is we're gonna remove the water pump. I've already undone the four bolts, which are just one, two, and then the other just below three, four. I'm just gonna leave that out against something. Uh, and we've got a tray at the bottom. So this will be replacing the water pump. Uh, we do this whenever we replace the cam belts generally, unless specifically asked not to, because to, rem to do the water pump, you have to take off the cam belt anyway, so you might as well do it together. Right, so the water pump is out, uh, and as you can see, all of the coolant will come out of the system with it, uh, which is fine. We anticipate that happening. So what we're going to do now is scurf up the mating area for the new water pump, uh, apply some new mastic, let that set, uh, and then work backwards, really. A new cam belt, new tensioner, and put everything back together. Okay, so we've uh, cleaned up the mating surface for the new water pump. Um, what we're going to do now, while that dries off a little bit, this is our new water pump. We're going to put some mastic in this groove here. Uh, and while that sets, we're going to clean up the bolts and the nut. Uh, that sets a bit just gets a bit more tacky and it dries easier when we put it on okay so we've got that cam belt on uh but now it's time to get it fitted properly so here using the information we have from autodata 
there's the torque we want and it shows this tool here this is just use the tensioner uh, we're going to adjust the tensioner using this get it to that torque and then see if it's all timed up okay so we've got the cambo on we've made sure it's tensioned properly we've spun it around a couple of times and it stayed on and stayed true and stayed in time so now what we're going to do is spin it around a couple more times get this belt to come true if it doesn't then uh problem egg uh, and then we're going to clean up the mating surface for the cam cover and its gasket and then yeah throw it back together and bleed okay so cam cover is back on this is nice and true we're happy with that so it's throw everything back together uh, and then just do the radiator bleed and we're all done. Okay, so we're 90% done now. So now it's just time for the radiator bleed. So all the coolant came out, we took out the water pump. So we're gonna need to feed new radiator fluid through, coolant through, uh, and then bleed it out so we don't have any air bubbles. Uh, pretty awkward to show, but right there, that's the first bleed nipple. And uh, on this one, there's the second. Uh, neither of these are in the best nick that's not what it should be that's uh somebody's improvised that on and this uh is a damaged cap usually they have see that lip on there usually you can take them out i've actually used a pair of pliers on this one um but yeah we re vaseline and uh, then we bleed it all through okay so we've done our bleed we've bled from the first point and the second point here uh we're gonna have to have a little bit of a clean up uh, but moving back over to what we looked at earlier giving it a quick clean gonna do a bit more and then also looking at the breather pipe that needed to be replaced it's actually this seal here i'm going to replace the seal get some new hose put in and clean out the airbox as well brake cleaner brake cleaner airline out through there should be a good job all right so everything's done now it's just to turn the key and it works 